This is what my most recently developed video game, a first person shooter, looks like. Now, you might be thinking, there's nothing there, it's just a blank screen. Well, it might be, or is there more here than meets the eye? Over the years, visuals have become an integral part of the gaming experience. Almost all the information we receive from games is communicated by sight. But what if that was taken away? Is it possible to create a game that is playable even if you are completely blind? These were the questions I aimed to answer six months ago. But little did I know, tackling them to create a game without visuals would become the biggest challenge I would face in my game development career. My first idea for a game without visuals was a first person shooter, where the player plays as a turret that spins around in circles and blasts enemies to pieces. To start off, I coded the functionality for the turret to spin and shoot. After that, I added enemies which are randomly spawned in waves. In the first wave, there is one enemy, the second wave has two, the third, three, and so on. As you progress through waves, the enemies get faster and eventually require multiple shots to defeat. But I'm making a game with zero visuals. So you're probably thinking, how on earth would you know where the enemies are? How would you aim accurately? And how would you know if the enemies have been defeated? To answer these questions, we first have to take a few steps back. Out of our five senses, most games give the player information through two of them. Sight, the primary sense, and sound, the secondary sense. Since I'm not using visuals in my game, I decided to use audio as a primary sense. Unfortunately, one sense alone isn't enough, so I introduced two more. Touch and proprioception. Now that I had the ingredients ready, it was time to start cooking. Spatial audio allows you to create the illusion that sound is coming from different directions and distances around the player. This is done by playing sounds into your ears at different volumes, pitches, and times. Now we can hear the general direction of the enemies, but that isn't accurate enough. It needs to be combined with the sense of touch. To do this, I used the haptic feedback features on mobile devices. This allowed me to use a diverse set of vibrations and clicks with different lengths and intensities. So I made the phone vibrate while you were aiming directly at an enemy, which allows the player to immediately know where the enemy is with pinpoint precision. To tell the player that an enemy has been defeated, I used a short haptic click and a sound effect. Implementing haptic feedback took way longer than anticipated. I literally spent weeks trying to find out how to implement it into Android devices, but nothing worked. Then one day, when I was on the verge of giving up, I realized I had a haptic feedback disabled in my phone's settings. <clears throat> Finally, to tie it all together, I took advantage of proprioception, an internal sense that comes from receptors in your muscles, tendons, and joints which gives you the ability to feel the position and movement of your body without visual cues. For example, try closing your eyes and touching your nose with your pointer finger. Pretty easy, huh? Now, this next example is a little harder. What you're gonna have to do is send me your social security number. The turret is controlled by tracking the player's motion and having the turret mimic it. This lets the player know the state of their in-game character without actually needing to see it. So now, through proprioception, they know exactly in which direction they are pointing and exactly how much they need to move in order to aim in a new direction. To track in which direction the player is pointing, I use the gyroscope in mobile devices to determine its orientation. This was definitely the most challenging aspect of the game since Quaternions were involved. But after a lot of headbanging and having nightmares about Quaternions, I got it working. 
Typically, YouTube videos allow you to experience video games because they both use visuals and audio. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to fully experience this game in a video format because it is missing the senses of touch and proprioception. But if you want to experience it for yourself, I have left the link to the game in the description. That is it for my first devlog on Blind Arcade. But don't worry, this is just the beginning. I have plans for rhythm, memory, and racing games, all of which, of course, will be made to work without visuals. Here's even a sneak peek at my next two games. These games track motion and interpret it differently. The first one is a driving game, and the second one is similar to the dinosaur game. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for listening.